I'm your host, Aaron Heath. I'd like to take a moment and thank you for downloading, subscribing, and most importantly, listening to episode number 94 of the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. You can find the show notes by going to gunrightsintexas.com slash 094. Hey, welcome back to the Gun Rights in Texas podcast, and I have been gone for quite a while. I know that. However, I have had a lot of good reasons. I'm not going to go into details. And to be honest, I wouldn't be back right now, except there's some things we have to talk about. The podcast is changing. We are going to change from being a podcast on politics to being a podcast on education. We want to educate the public. We want to educate gun owners, and we want to educate our legislators. In order to do that, there are a number of things we have to go through. But that's all stuff I'm working on. Don't worry about it. What you do need to consider is the changes are not only coming, they're actually coming along nicely. But because I wasn't ready, the equipment wasn't set up, and it's not its not 100% ready to go, but I got it set up quickly, got things working, kind of, and we're here. I also want to say that I have no show notes for this episode, <laughs> and uh, I really wasn't ready for this episode either. However, I do want to talk about four different bills in this legislative session. The first bill I want to talk about is House Bill 560. This bill will, if if it becomes law, this bill will reduce the number of off-limits locations for license holders. Then I want to talk about Senate Bill 16. Senate Bill 16 will reduce the price of a license for somebody going to get their initial license and for somebody who's renewing. And then I want to talk about House Bill 375, which is Jonathan Stickland's unlicensed carry bill that essentially is identical to the bill filed last legislative session. And then I want to file House Bill, I want to talk about House Bill 1911. And there's some controversy on those bills, but we'll come back to all that. However, before I go any further, I do want to talk about the changes coming to the podcast. And we'll do that after I come back from this little audio clip that tells you how to get the show. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast is available on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Myro Player, YouTube, the website, and of course, in your favorite app using the RSS feed on the website. With all those options, there is no excuse for not subscribing. Links to all these can be found on every page of the website. Now that we're back, let me tell you where we're making changes on the podcast. First off, like I said, we're going to concentrate on education. We want to educate the public, and we want to educate gun owners. And the first thing we got to do is actually educate gun owners on how to educate the public. And in that regard, we are going to talk about how can you be a good ambassador for gun rights? How can you be a good statesman for gun rights? How can you go out there and make a good impression for everybody? How do you go about making the public feel at ease when they see open carry? How do you go about making the public feel at ease when they see somebody with a firearm that's not doing anything other than simply carrying that firearm for defense? We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about how, as gun owners, we can educate the public and let them know gun rights are just as important as their ability to vote their ability to cross a state line without having to show papers, and how and how their right to defend themselves is just as important as their right to own property. We have to educate the public on all of this. We have to educate the public on what the laws are, what the law means, and we want to make sure that when somebody comes along and says, I'm a gun owner, then we want to make sure they have the opportunity to st- to essentially, well, we want them to be able to make a good impression on the rest of the public. We want to help people learn how to be good gun owners, and we want to help people learn how to be better gun owners. We can all be tactical mall ninjas. And in fact, I hope nobody wants to be a tactical mall ninja. But I, I am one of those people that I want to advance gun rights. I want to advance gun rights and make sure that everybody that is in my circles knows how they can do it and that's why where this podcast is going we're also going to try and educate our legislators in the process of the next 
not in this session, but for the next session, we're going to try to educate our legislators as well as the public and other gun owners. And our goal is when the next legislative session starts, whether they're pro or anti-gun, the legislature understands gun rights on a level that they've never done it before. Alice Tripp, Tara Micah, the NRA and TSRA, and I, Alice Tripp is the TSRA legislative uh, lobbyist, and Tara Micah is the NRA's lobbyist. They do a good job, but we, meaning you, the listeners, have a better chance of educating your legislator, and you have a better chance of or your representative, and you have a better chance of educating your senator. And why is that? Because you can put them in their seat. You can put their replacement in their seat. And because of that, you have a power over them that the NRA and the TSRA doesn't. You are a voter in their district. And we want to make sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you educate your legislators, whether they're representatives or they're senators, you need to make sure they know how to vote and how to make an informed decision when they vote. If they vote against legislation that we feel is important and they vote against it because they are morally opposed to it, that's a lot better than them voting against it because they saw on the news that the bill would let felons carry a gun when, in all honesty, it's still illegal for a felon to carry a gun even though unlicensed carry is being advertised as letting anybody carry a gun. Alice Tripp and Tara Micah, they can explain this, but the politicians are not going to believe them as, they're not as likely to believe them if they are on the fence or anti-gun as they would believe their constituents who are calling saying, I want this passed. I want this passed because I want to be able to defend myself. The more knowledge we can share, the better our chances of passing legislation are. We can pull the fence sitters to our side if we go about it with reasoned arguments and with emotional cases that support our arguments on a factual basis. The other side, all they've got are emotional arguments that are they're not based on fact, and we can defeat that. We can defeat it with emotional arguments supported by fact. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to have video extras for episodes. These video extras will cover things such as reloading, equipment, anything relating to firearms. We're going to make sure there is a video extra for it in some form eventually. If we cover it on the podcast, there's going to be a video extra for it. And these extras are not going to be part of the podcast itself. They're just going to be something that's, hey, you want more information on this particular item? Go check out the video, and there'll be a link in the show notes for those videos. That's the whole point of the video extra. Anyways, I'm going to run the audio clip that tells you how to find the show on social media, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about the two bills that I feel we need to pass this session more than anything else. And I may surprise you with what those bills are. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast has a social media presence. You can like it on Facebook, you can follow it on Twitter, you can circle it on Google+, and you can follow it on Instagram. With all those options, let's get social. Okay, let's talk about House Bill 560. House Bill 560 is the bill that would remove off-limits locations. I would tell you this is a good bill, but I'd be lying. This is not a good bill. This is a great bill. In fact, this is the most important bill, in my opinion, before this legislature. House Bill 560 would allow people to defend themselves in a number of locations that are currently off limits by law. This bill would not remove the right of property owners to post 30-06 or 30-07 signs, but it would, it would allow people to carry place in places that they would not have been able to carry otherwise. This would reduce the number of soft targets that potential terrorists, lunatics, and people seeking attention can attack. Now, I could give you a huge analysis and rundown of the bill and all the details on it. But in reality, I don't have to do that because Charles Cotton has actually done that himself already. 
Go to the TexasFirearmsCoalition.com website, click on podcast, find the short shot. It's some, it should be somewhere between December 10th and December 17th. I think that's when it was released. And it deals with House Bill 560. He goes into detail. He gives a very good analysis of it. Go check it out. In fact, pause this podcast, go download that one, listen to it, and then come back. And then you'll understand me when I say House Bill 560 is the most important bill we can pass this legislative session. Moving on, let's talk about Senate Bill 16. Senate Bill 16 has a number of things going for it that other bills do not. First and foremost, Senate Bill 16 would reduce the cost of a license holder's initial application. It'd go from $140 to, I believe it's $40. Now, some people might say this is a good thing. Some people might say, well, that just makes it harder to pass unlicensed carry. In truth, everything you do to make it easier for somebody to carry a firearm legally is a good thing. The more people you get out there carrying firearms and they do it responsibly, the easier it is to make it easier for more people to carry. And that's why this bill is important. Now, this bill also reduces the cost of an initial, or not only does it reduce the cost of an initial license, it reduces the cost of a renewal too. It drops it from $70 to 40. Now, there are people that get discounts such as law enforcement, indigenous, and others, and I believe they get a further reduction as well. Overall, this bill is a good bill. Senate Bill 16 is also using a number that's quite a bit lower than other Senate bills, and that's because it's a priority of our lieutenant governor. He gets to assign some extremely low numbers to certain bills that he feels are important and they're a priority for him, and this helps them get passed in in the legislative process. And I'm all for Senate Bill 16 having a low priority number, or having a lower number, making it a high priority bill. These two bills together would probably do more to help Texans get firearms than almost anything else, or not get firearms, but to carry firearms. These two bills would probably help Texans more than anything else. In fact, House Bill 560 would probably help more Texans defend themselves in places where they're likely to be attacked than anywhere else, than any other bill. And that's why I wanted to talk about those two. Now, I'm going to run the audio clip that tells you how to get in touch with me. And when we come back, I want to talk about House Bill 375 and House Bill 1911, which are both unlicensed carry bills. And we're going to discuss why these two bills are different and why those differences might not mean that much. And why House Bill 1911 is the bill that I am supporting over House Bill 375, even though House Bill 375 would make it easier for more people to carry a gun. Think about that while this plays. If you want to contact the podcast, please send email to Aaron at gunrightsintexas.com. Or you can leave a comment on the webpage, which is gunrightsintexas.com. However, if you want to leave a voicemail and be featured on the show, then please do so by dialing 409-292-6736. Now that we're back, let's talk about, well, let's talk about something that happened last legislative session. In the last legislative session, we had a situation develop where Poncho Navarez asked some people that were pushing for the unlicensed carry bill to leave his office. One of these individuals put his foot in the door and kept Poncho Navarez from shutting the door. This caused a big old stink. Panic buttons got installed and names were... People were called names, and overall, it gave gun owners a black eye. Well, many of those same supporters, or many of the supporters for the same bill, let me put it that way, were also involved in trying to get that bill passed by any means necessary. And they didn't understand how you go about passing a bill in the state legislature. (sighs) The problem is, when you have... People going in, they're acting like the south end of a northbound mule. It causes problems. Whether it's a legislator, somebody supporting the legislation, or a group supporting the legislation, it causes problems. It costs political capital for anybody on anybody involved on that issue. Anybody involved in gun rights lost political capital 
because of people basically going out there and causing a scene. Some folks might say, well, that's not fair. Yes, it is. It's perfectly fair to point that out. House Bill 375 is the same legislation that those people were supporting in the last legislative session refiled for this one. And it was filed in this session by the same guy that filed it in the last one, Jonathan Stickland. Now, Jonathan Stickland went to Austin, and he tried to get a number of things uh, filed and passed. Two things he really got burned on were red light cameras and unlicensed carry. His red light cameras bill, well, let's just say that that didn't work out very well. In fact, I think the committee actually tried to call people that he had on witness cards and proved that essentially these people were not even in the Capitol. So somebody was listing false witness cards in support or in support of his bill. Whether it was Stickland or not, I don't know. But it it definitely gave Stickland a black eye. It did not earn him any friends. His behavior on treating people in regards to his legislation and other people's legislation didn't help him either. However, Jonathan Stickland, I have to give him this, he doesn't give up. He's back. He's filed the unlicensed carry legislation, and his bill has a committee substitute that's ready to go. My understanding is he supports this committee substitute, as does Open Carry Texas and all the other little groups that's associated with them. But he's actually getting a committee hearing this time. Of course, he's behaved himself, and his supporters have behaved themselves this time too, or to a degree, as much as you can expect him to behave himself. I want to play an audio clip that tells you that where uh, Jonathan Stickland and Representative Phillips have a discussion, or not really a discussion. It's mm, Stickland asking for a hearing, and Phillips telling him why he didn't get one. And this was towards the last days of our legislative session in 2015. This was during the debate on Phillips' license carry bill, which passed. After that, we'll come back, we'll discuss it a little bit, and then we'll move on to House Bill 1911. Questions on the bill? Representative Phillips, I appreciate your efforts on this bill. You know that I am a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. You know that I have been working very hard for open carry for Texans. We disagreed on the way to go about that. I was just curious on a personal level. I know that you have maintained that this bill was specifically about license holders. You know my argument is is different and that we shouldn't have the license to begin with. Will you honestly work with me? Will you Will you give my bill a hearing in your committee so that we can have that discussion? You know that I am going to support your bill today because it's an advancement of Second Amendment rights, but there are literally tens of thousands of people who Mr. believe we Mr. need Stickland. to go to more. Will you work with me, Representative Phillips? Let me answer that. Mr. Stickland, uh, the fate of your bill was cast when the Senate decided they were not going to take up constitutional carry. I'm not going to argue with you. Your fate was treated as how you treated members on this floor as it related to your legislation and other legislation. It's also how those that support your amendment have treated members of this House, their families, and our staff, that there is no reason when there's other members who've worked hard, who try to work with each other, they have to have a chance to have have their hearing. They're going to get a hearing. And there you have it. That's why unlicensed carry died officially in the last legislative session. And now you have the same bill and there's going to be a committee substitute filed and that bill will move on hopefully and get a vote. Maybe not. In fact, it probably won't, but maybe it will. But let's talk about the next stage. Let's talk about whether or not it has a chance against a competing unlicensed carry bill. And that would be house bill 1911. These two bills are entirely different. They both allow unlicensed carry, but who qualifies is different in both bills. House Bill 375 would allow anybody that can legally purchase a firearm and legally possess that firearm to carry it. House Bill 1911 would limit the ability to carry a firearm to the ability to get a concealed handgun license. And what this would mean is if you are able to buy a firearm, you're not delinquent on taxes or child support, then you can carry a gun, essentially. There's a little more involved than that, but that's the most narrow version of it. And that's really where the two bills differ. 
Now, both bills are up for committee substitutes, so that could change. We won't get to see what the committee substitute looks like unless both bills are voted out of committee favorably. And when they're voted out of committee a day or two later, hopefully we'll be able to look at the text of the bill then. Both bills are up for a committee hearing next week. But let's talk about why these differences are so important. And it all boils down to image. HB 375, anybody that can buy a gun can carry a gun. Well, the media will take that and say anybody can carry a gun under HB 375. Anti-gun forces will say the same thing. They can't really say that about House Bill 1911. And when we go to the legislature and try to support House Bill 1911, we'll say, hey, look at it this way. License holders are the most law-abiding segment of the population as far as the DPS can show you statistics for. Why not let the people that want to, that are qualified to get the license carry without getting it? It's the same group of people. The only difference is they haven't, they haven't uh, paid the money, essentially. Some may have taken the class, some may not have taken the class. And then the legislators will say, you know, that doesn't sound unreasonable. Some of them will say, that's perfectly fine with me. I would like to see the bill allow more people to carry. Some will say, I can agree with that. I will support it. Some will say, well, I don't want to, I don't want unlicensed carry, but this is a good compromise for me. I'll support it, but I want something in return. And legislators will trade votes back and forth. Maybe the guy pu- pulling for the red light camera removal or uh, to make this guy that pulling to make red light cameras illegal, they'll say, well, I'll support your version of unlicensed carry and you give me a vote for my anti-red light camera bill. Otherwise, I won't support your version of the bill. Well, guess what? You just compromised and advanced gun rights. Now, you take this bill and you advance it. Or you take either of these bills and you advance them. And right now, you're already seeing... Uh, you already see him fighting over the two versions of the bill. And I'm going to go pull up a, I want to pull up a screenshot of something that I want to make sure people understand. This post was posted yesterday evening, and I'm recording this on Friday. This was sent to all at NRA members. Anyone notice anything? The NRA does not support constitutional carry. They've just made it clear. They completely ignored the better constitutional carry bill. Wait a minute. They don't support constitutional carry because they ignored the better constitutional carry bill and only informed members of the weaker bill. Wait a minute. They informed them of what you consider the weaker bill, but they don't support it. That don't make sense. The fact is, House Bill 1911 keeps in place unconstitutional and restrictive qualifications of current law to exercise their right to keep and bear arms. HB 375 would allow anyone who isn't a prohibited person to carry without a license, and I just lost where I was at, and not convert your rights to, to tax collection agent. I guess what they're trying to do is, because their English is kind of broken, either they've got somebody from a non-English speaking country writing this, or they're not really thinking when they write it out. They're just running off the, running and, uh, even I try to proofread. But anyways, I me mean, I was screenshotting that, by the way. The next paragraph reads, In other words, the NRA and other groups are supporting a bill that would continue to strip Texans of their right for being delinquent on child support or taxes instead of a bill that would allow anyone who could legally purchase a, and possess a firearm to carry it without a government permission slip. This email went out to NRA's millions of members without a mention of a House Bill 375. Stand and fight is nothing more than a bumper sticker. Okay, consider this. That second paragraph, it makes it sound like this particular, it makes it sound like this group is supporting people being able to carry a gun because they are delinquent on child support or delinquent on taxes. Think about the spin you would have in this instance, okay? Open Carry Texas came out against House Bill 1911 because it does not allow deadbeat dads and tax evaders to carry a gun. News at 11. That's not the image you want. If you're going to attack an unlicensed carry bill because it's not your unlicensed carry bill, why are you trying, 
why are you presenting yourself as a gun rights group? You're an unlicensed. You are not a gun rights group. You you are you're a PR disaster. Now I want to read to you what they posted to Facebook on February 15th. Our good friend, Representative James White, has filed his version of a constitutional carry bill, House Bill 1911. And in parentheses, they got asterisk snicker. I guess they find 1911 funny. In a nutshell, the bill simply states you would that if you would otherwise qualify for a license, you can carry without one. They go on, they describe a few potential issues with the rules, but they supported it on February 15th. And a little over five weeks later, they're opposed to it. NRA is does not support constitutional carry because that's the only bill that they told the public about. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know about you, but that don't make sense to me. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this show up. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on what I need to work on to advance my efforts on bringing the podcast back. But I wanted to touch on these four bills because I have been getting a lot of email about them. And after this, well, we'll go from there. Hopefully I'll have episode 95 soon and it'll be in the new format, which is coming along nicely. But a lot of stuff is changing. I still need to record new audio clips for all of this other stuff. With that said, stay safe carry responsibly, and go out and educate people. Educate other gun owners. Educate the public. And most importantly, educate your representatives. Thank you for listening to the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. Please leave a review on iTunes or send feedback to the host. Your input will be used to improve the show. Stay safe and please carry responsibly. And just in case I edited it out on accident and didn't realize it, or in case I forgot to mention it, because that's also a possibility, please go to TexasFirearmsCoalition.com and check out Charles Cotton's Texas Firearms Coalition podcast. He does do a real good analysis on House Bill 560, and it's a very detailed analysis. Go check it out. And just for the record, Charles Cotton did help people with the uh, House Bill 1911 committee substitute. He didn't write the bill. He didn't write the committee substitute, but he did help advance the bill. Go check that out and let me know. Let me hear from you. Let me know what you're thinking. And if you want to know anything about the legislative session or what's going on, check out Charles Cotton's TexasFirearmsCoalition.com website and check out the texasCHLforum.com website, which you can also reach from texasLTCforum.com. But both those websites and all three of those domain names are very good resources to check out. With that said, stay safe and carry responsibly.